Okay, so I will assume that everything is fine. So I would like to uh, welcome you to my presentation about uh, blockchain messaging protocols. And word of advice, it's uh, most likely going to be the very first one. <laughs> so back of your seatbelts and yeah, we can continue on. Okay, so one more thing before we go. And okay, so uh, first of all, uh, what I will be talking about uh, on the uh, on the uh, presentation. First, I will talk about adversary model, then about uh, metadata. I will uh, say a bit about useful terms in case of uh, decentralized messaging. And also I will provide you with some protocol examples. So to begin with, uh, adversary model. Uh, the protocol will be structured in several layers and adversary might appear on every each one of them. So assumption needs to be made that uh, every each layer should be protected uh, against him. So uh, let's say traffic analysis. The adversary might uh, observe the incoming and outgoing going traffic that uh, goes in the network. And by this, he can uh, diagnose what kind of messages are we sending and who are we talking to. And uh, he can even spoof uh, the network just so that we get the wrong messages or, or uh, some bad things can happen. You might think that, for example, Tor might protect you from uh, adversary by providing anonymity. But I don't know if many people know that Tor's one weakness is that uh, basic statistical methods uh, renders him uh, kind of semi-useless because if someone uh, simply checks incoming and outgoing movement uh, in a given time, he can precisely, almost precisely, diagnose which one of the users is actually you. So it looks nice, but it doesn't provide you with total anonymity. Also, cryptographic assumption needs to be made because right now we operate in a certain set of algorithms that is said to be safe but as the computers become more and more sophisticated and right now google even came up with uh, quantum supremacy then we need to think about something more and more complicated so in uh, right now the situation with the uh, cryptographic algorithms that we are currently using will most definitely uh, change in the following years. So next, DOS and spam. Uh, this is not something that uh, would normally uh, come to your mind when you're thinking about uh, centralized messaging, but when it comes to decentralization, uh, when nodes communicate uh, between each other, this is really crucial thing. Uh, and if someone attacks you with this kind of uh, attack, it can both uh, spoof your message, uh, render it completely useless, or uh, generate such a high traffic that you wouldn't even get uh, the message that you would like. So yeah, this is something also that you should uh, think about. So from this model of adversary, uh, from the uh, attack vectors that we've discussed, there are some requirements for decentralized message uh, protocols. And uh, first of all, ensuring the uh, metadata protection, uh, assuring convenience, assuring smooth decentralization 
and maybe maybe uh, providing some incentives to achieve mass adoption. So I will start with metadata protection because there are three uh, three kinds: sender anonymity, receiver anonymity, and sa ser <laughs> sender receiver unlinkability. Sender anonymity is when someone sends and nobody knows who that guy is. Receiver is when someone uh, sends, but you don't know to who. And ser sender receiver unlinkability is something a bit different because you send a message, but uh, you cannot prove that the guy who sent it is the original sender because there are many interlying nodes. And also the person who received it is actually the receiver because he might just relay them forward. Next, metadata. What it actually is. Okay, so imagine on one hand that metadata is like uh, with this photo. It's a, uh, it's a photo of a cat and on it you have some meta information about this image. Okay, there's a name, there's a date and time when it was taken, a camera settings and geolocalization. Uh, sometimes some, uh, for example, uh, smart uh, phones have uh, embedded algorithms that basically embed it into your pictures while you don't even need to know about it. And also when it comes to uh, web servers and uh, blog posts or, some, or something like this, title, author, published, time, category, tags, and also the URL. These are the metadata. So you could kind of think that metadata is sort of like a, a browser history that is being stored on a totally remote place that you have no control of and someone might use it against you. Is it scary? Yes, it is. So moving forward, metadata, how it is collected. Uh, when you go online, everything uh, you do gets routed via servers maintained by your internet service provider. And only, this is uh, some information I gathered by uh, Australian uh, IPs, uh, what were they told to record in 2017. So I think that it even improved from that time. The account holders, names, uh, address, date of birth, birth, personally identifiable uh, data. So yeah, someone might <laughs> someone might uh, identify you because of this metadata. And the question: Why should we care? Michael Hayden, former director of NSA, said, "We kill people based on metadata." And as, as funny as it may seem, the person and the institution uh, he's behind is not that uh, funny at all, because uh, this is National Security Agency. Really, uh, it's, it's uh, in the USA, uh, one of the most important national uh, organizations. And just, just for you to imagine um, one case scenario when metadata can be, can make some Funny, weird uh, ch uh, changes to your life. Imagine that you're, uh, you just made a dinner, okay? And it looks beautiful. You just want to send this picture to all of your friends, everyone who is involved, uh, who everyone you know, like, and share. Just, just take a picture, upload it into Instagram, and you feel happy about yourself. But here comes the police knocking to your door because the metadata of geolocalization and uh, the timing is suspiciously uh, precisely uh, revealing that it's the same uh, timing and the same place that your neighbor got killed. Funny, right? It's, it's, it's like uh, it could never ever actually happen, but it did. For example, I don't know if you know uh, the guy McAfee, uh, the guy who 
uh, invented this this uh, antivirus, among other stuff. Yeah, he had most likely similar situation, but it's up to uh, <laughs> some lawyers and others to actually uh, judge if if it was this situation or not. Uh, and I changed uh, some facts that I uh, I cannot uh, know for sure. And metadata uh, protection points of perspective. For example, uh, McAfee's neighbor. Yeah, this one is really weird, uh, kind of scary, but also think about the mom's perspective. Uh, if there is entirely no metadata, it's like there was no browser history on your browser. And anyone who actually sees this kind of uh, history on your browser might get a little weird impression about you. So yeah, this is also something worth uh, considering if you're uh, going into uh, this depth. Uh, also, uh, there is a voter point of perspective. If someone diagnoses uh, your uh, metadata, it's basically like in this image, uh, all of these uh, stuff that you do in the internet, it reveals your online habits. So as a voter, someone might uh, understand uh, what kind of option would you be interested in when voting. And he might leverage this against you, like making some in incentives uh, for you to actually vote or discourage you from voting. Social media does many weird things, but they are not the only ones. And also one thing about society. This is, uh, there's one thing that, one huge topic I have no uh, time actually to discuss right now. And it's called uh, so social cooling. Uh, it uh, paraphrases in a way uh, global warming. But uh, I would really advise you to get deep into this topic because it's a serious, serious one that uh, we are facing more and more of right now. Okay, so next requirement, decentralization. Uh, our, algorithm, <laughs> our algorithm should be scalable and up to 1 million active nodes. And it shouldn't have any uh, specialized service providers. Yeah, ideally pure peer-to-peer -peer protocol. And uh, also one more thing about uh, our protocol it shouldn't carry uh, it shouldn't uh, carry significant uh, bandwidth load and we should be able to actually use it uh, using our mobile plan so it cannot create heavy traffic on the internet okay useful terms bandwidth uh, latency anonymity trilemma Trilemma is, uh, as you can see, uh, something like the car. You want it, you want it fast, uh, well, and cheap. You pick two. Basically, this is the same situation. Uh, you can have strong anonymity. You can have low uh, bandwidth overhead and or low <laughs> latency. Just pick two because you cannot have all of these uh, altogether. And bandwidth overhead is the number of noise that you create so that you might be anonymous. Latency overhead is the number of rounds that your message is being delayed, relayed, so that uh, you might hide in the relay that is uh, constructed for you. And yeah, strong anonymity without uh, large latency on or bandwidth cannot be reached. There are some uh, scientific papers about it. Okay, next thing I would like to say uh, is actually for uh, all of uh, blockchain people, it's obvious, but there might be some new guys incoming, so I will have to discuss it anyway. Uh, okay, so Byzantine general problem. <clears throat> Imagine the situation that uh, there are some generals uh, trying to coordinate attack on a city. And uh, this is in Byzantine environment. <laughs> it even took the name uh, after, uh, after this problem. 
Byzantine environment is when everyone can basically lie to each other and uh, there is no, uh, no uh, way to be 100% sure about each agent and his, uh, what he's going to do uh, in given situ given situation. So uh, Byzantine generals need to coordinate attack, either they attack or don't. If uh, they attack with too little forces, they will just bounce off the walls. If they uh, don't attack uh, while uh, their friends will, uh, they will also uh, be smeared on the walls uh, while everyone would be a bit angry on their, on their colleagues who actually did nothing. So basically, this is actually a valid problem because every general can lie to all the others that, oh, he just heard some message that everyone else is attacking, we should attack, and something like this. And you need to, uh, our algorithm needs to uh, operate under this condition. So one more, one more time, Byzantine fault tolerance is the dependability of a fault tolerance system to uh, such uh, conditions. If it's uh, Byzantine fault tolerant, people can DOSU and spoof however they want, but they can still uh, not get, uh, not spoof your message and uh, won't destroy uh, the uh, original uh, message the true message will arise. Okay, so one last thing, information symmetry. Uh, imagine information symmetry is the situation when each party has the same level of knowledge about a uh, given object or topic. For example, uh, just discussing some stuff. Asymmetric information is when some party has better knowing, uh, better knowledge about uh, a given uh, object and can use it uh, against the other party. For example, someone sells you a car, he knows that this is basically a wreck uh, that was basically glued <laughs> with some uh, duct tape and you have no idea. And you see this car as uh, some shiny, uh, beautiful stuff and uh, you don't know and you might actually incidentally buy it for some uh, overpriced uh, stuff and also when someone knows about you uh, just too much they can also leverage it to uh, for example as i said before uh, give you some incentives uh, to vote or not and basically kind of manipulate you into one uh, behavior or another. Okay, so going to protocol examples uh, itself. <clears throat> First of all, I would like to uh, say about Whisper. It used to be the most popular one, but right now it's becoming more and more deprecated. It's, uh, it's a message protocol uses uh, message data protection and darkness to ensure privacy. It's off-chain. By the way, guys, uh, there is a difference between things that go off-chain, uh, on-chain and off-chain. Uh, the off-chain basically are part of the uh, blockchain environment, while they are not exactly uh, implemented on the uh, chain. They just exist somewhere on the nearby and they just help uh, develop the uh, situation, uh, the, <laughs> the environment. Okay, consensus validation, proof of work. Uh, if someone don't know what proof of work is, uh, I'm not gonna go that deep in here, uh, but for all the blockchain uh, people, this is the, this is the most uh, well-known uh, consensus validation way. The interesting thing is darkness. The property of the system, when no meta information is being leaked and plausible de deniability is ensured. Uh, plausible deniability is one when uh, you receive uh, some message and it's 
uh, there is no way to actually tell if you're the receiver or you just receive the messages to relay them uh, to the other nodes. And plausible deniability is just when you always can say, oh, it's not mine, it's not, it's not mine. So, with Procalyps, it forwards all the messages. So, this means high latency, uh, it's incredible amount of noise, high traffic, and high processor load. Because each message that comes to you, you need to know if this is the message that you should be answering or not. And also high memory usage to actually mark some messages that you've already uh, processed them and you, need, you don't need to process them anymore. They are uh, none of your business for example. And how high is high? Uh, naive uh, case of uh, receiving messaging uh, messages all, only meant for you is for 1 million users receiving bandwidth is about 1000 kilobytes a day. Seems nice. Receiving messages for everyone, basically naive case of what Whisper does. For 1 million user, uh, 953.7 gigabytes per day. Guys, I don't want to have this one on my mobile phone, really. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I just, I just wouldn't. Okay, so uh, what comes, uh, this is basically the uh, reason why this protocol is being deprecated. It's beautiful, it's great, it, it has so uh, awesome, it, it can do so awesome thing, but yeah, one terabyte per day is quite a lot. Okay, so Vacu. This is a fork of Whisper. It's also a messaging protocol. It's also off-chain. It uses consensus validation uh, as a proof of work. It has little metadata protection and it uses uh, static sharding. And as you can see, for 1 million users, it already reduced quite nicely the amount of bandwidth. But its caveats are uh, it hasn't been tested in large scale, uh, scale simulation and there are some incompatibilities between the versions. Uh, Go uh, and status uh, whisper, GEF and status whisper. Next one is Ho Hopper. It's also messaging uh, protocol. It's supported by uh, HopperNet team. It's based, it's built from scratch. Consensus method is provably really. A license is GPL version free. I could stop right now, <laughs> but one more time. This proof of relay is so nice that I would uh, like to go deep because imagine this. Imagine that Alice uh, wants to uh, send some information to Dave, okay? It uh, encrypts payment. Two hoppers uh, goes into Bob. Then Bob relays uh, the message to Charlie and Charlie decrypts half of the uh, key to Bob. Uh, by this, Bob can get his money. And also Charlie, forwards the message to Dave, Dave encrypts half of the payment, and it goes back to Charlie. So Charlie earns money, Bob earns money, Alice pays a huge price to actually send something to Dave. And it seems nice, but what if Charlie actually don't want to be fair with anyone? If it's spoofing and information. Uh, this is rather weird for me because you know, one more time, we are uh, living in Byzantine uh, environment and uh, I haven't seen any uh, mention uh, any mention of uh, this actually being solved. Anyway, my take is because they actually uh, were the guys who uh, thought about these things uh, and they uh, they had some 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 documentation about uh why Byzantine tolerance is uh is heavy. My take is that you can make more relays to Dave, thus paying more money, and uh, by this way just 
making your information more heavily paid and also more secure. I don't know. I don't like this part of it, but the whole relaying mes uh, mechanism is rather nice. Okay, so the last one. I really like the approach that uh, guys took. Messaging type, uh, type is PubSub. It's not messaging protocol, but it's near. Supported by Autonomous Network uh, Research Group based on Mosquito MQTT. Consensus method is safety and liveness properties. This is a very novel approach to the problem and I like it very much. Safety property proves that something bad will never happen. Liveness property informally guarantees that the system will make progress and something good will always happen. License is something similar to uh, BDS uh, for close, but I didn't, uh, I'm, uh, I have no idea how close it is. I just saw the first four lines and if it's unnamed, maybe it's for a reason. I have no idea. So I will just uh, put it as unnamed. And what is safety properties? Safety properties guarantees publisher safety, subs <laughs> subscriber consensus, in-order delivery, and non-forgery. Guys, if I had more time, <laughs> I would get into the details, but still there, uh, the documentation about it, it's uh, available on the internet, so you can just read it. It's it's very nice, it's very novel in, in the way that they are just thinking what can go wrong and pointing this out and making defense against it. So yeah, this is a novel, uh, very scientific approach. The liveness property, uh, means messaging from any co correct publisher are uh, delivered to correct subscribers within a bounded delay. Guys, the biggest uh, difference between this protocol and the others is that this is actually on-chain. So it utilizes uh, smart contracts to actually uh, perform this uh, operation, this, this messaging. And while uh, smart contract gets to fruition, uh, the pops up mechanism that is embedded into this uh, protocol basically is responsible to uh, responsible for uh, notifying uh, everyone else. Uh, okay, the time is going down. Uh, I'm just gonna say that this is uh, not the business case for the uh, messaging system like uh, Messenger or Telegram or WhatsApp. This is uh, more of a control over uh, stock. If it's, uh, for example, if some food is being stored in a good uh, condition, a good environment, and uh, all the shops that buys from uh, this store needs to be uh, notified about it. Great idea and I really love it. Okay, so this is a, just a summary of all the uh, topics, all the, uh, all, all the protocols that we've talked so far and yeah uh, this would be all and this would conclude my presentation so yeah thank you guys <laughs> if you have any questions feel free to ask me uh, on teams or, or in uh, anything okay so yeah I'm just gonna drop my screen sharing